Okay, hello again. Um, this is actually going to be the fifth video, uh, rigging the IK of the arm. Because I'm going to do uh, one more thing here. I guess we can call it uh, considered like a bonus video. But because <laughs> I realized in the previous one I said that was the last one. Anyway, what I want to do here is uh, I want to put in a double jointed forearm roll. And what that is basically is taking this bone from the wrist to the elbow and breaking it and into two so that when we select this wrist control and rotate it we're getting a nice even um, rotation or twist in the mesh around this area rather than just a harsh twist at the beginning of the wrist and nothing at the elbow because of course uh, hopefully you know by this point the human body has two bones here in this area that do that for us and you know if you look at your own wrist and twist it around you'll quickly realize that the skin all the way from the wrist all the way up to the elbow twists. Um, and again, obviously, uh, it doesn't do that from like the shoulder or from the elbow up to the shoulder. So uh, without further ado, what we want to do, what I want to do is put a bone right in the middle of these two uh, between the wrist bone and the elbow. So uh, one thing I want to show you is make sure you know where the wrist bone is, uh, wrist bone right under the elbow joint. So when I unparent this, you're going to notice there's going to be some constraints here. So either I can middle mouse drag this off of here or I can hit unparent. And what that's going to do is separate these two bones, right? Now, obviously over here we have these constraints. So what's going to happen is I'm going to create a bone right in the middle of these and then we need to make sure that this hierarchy is set up correctly. So, okay, without further ado, the uh, the kind of a trick to getting a new bone in here exactly in the center uh, is to use a locator. So with nothing selected, I'm going to use a locator. And to find the exact center of this, I'm going to select these two joints. And what I'm going to do is point constrain the locator to those two joints. And what Maya is going to do, or what it does, is it basically, so I'm going to select the two joints, either driver, driver, and then the driven is locator. Constrain point. Now, as we know, when uh, anything driven is constrained to two different objects, it gives them 50% each. So that put us dead center of these two joints, which is exactly what we want. And this is where I want my new uh, forearm joint. So uh, I'm going to deselect that. And under the joint tool, I'm going to double click this and show you really quick. Sometimes this is on, sometimes it's not. I think by default, this is checked. But you definitely want this variable bone radius setting on right now. It's going to keep it aligned to the other sides of the bones. If you take this off, or if you notice in your model uh, somewhere the bone, the joints are different sizes, it's because you've deselected this. So. Just so you know, that's out there. Okay, so now we have our joint tool selected, and when you have the joint tool selected and you click right over another joint, it's automatically going to assume you want to start from that joint, which is what I want to do. So I'm starting my joint chain then with that joint. I'm going to hold down the V key and then left mouse button, and it's going to snap directly to that locator, which I know is halfway between the elbow and the wrist, so it's exactly what we want. Then I'm just going to hit Enter. We've got our new joint chain. Uh, I'm going to copy the name of the elbow, select this joint, and I'm going to rename this left forearm joint. And there we go. It's easy as that. We're all done with the locator. I'm just going to simply delete it out of there. Um, you know, I, had, I forgot to double check and make sure my constraints should delete with that, but I'll have to go back in and check. Uh, let's do, let's look under here and make sure I don't have a, no, this is, these are, that's the elbow constraint, orient constraint, and that's the shoulder clavicle. So, um, the constraints, uh, cleanly deleted out of there. And I could have undone, anyway. Alright, so here's our, my new joint, and I want to, the wrist, I want to reparent this back up so that our, we get the wrist back in here, right? So, Selecting the wrist, shift select the forearm, and parent. And there we go. Our hierarchy is uh, put back together. We just did a quick little surgery here, which is some sort of a pun because uh, I just had a couple ankle surgeries here in the last couple months. So 
No, ain't nothing's quick about that. But uh, anyway, so this guy is all lined up. He's perfectly straight. What we're going to do now is I'm going to just check the time. Oh, much better. Uh, I was recording this video here a little while ago. Maya froze on me a couple of times. So. And uh, I went to pause the video and uh, uh, did a little cursing. And the video didn't pause, I guess. So we deleted that. Anyway, all right. So now what we're going to do is if you guys have this uh, book, I know my class does, Body Language by Eric Allen and Kelly Murdoch. Uh, I'll, there's going to be some notes on my blog, which is coming up. But anyway, page, what are we at? Page uh, 103 is uh, the ro starts the rotation. So what we're going to do is when this guy rotates and in this direction, I want these other bones to rotate along with it. Now, here's the problem. Um, I stuck my elbow joint. I have locked and hidden all the other attributes in rotate Y. I now want this joint to be able to rotate in X, right? Uh, so how do we go about fixing that? Because right now, I cannot rotate it in X. Uh, to do this, to get these back, uh, we're going to go into channel, oh, edit, and then channel control. Okay, so in the keyable, you'll see uh, I have rotate Y and visibility. In the locked, I have rotate X and, and Z locked off. So if you shift select these, move them over, they are now unlocked. But you'll notice they didn't show up in the channels because that's not it's not keyable yet. So all I need to do is scroll down here now, uh, rotate. Oh, I don't want rotate axis. I just want a clean rotate. Here we go. Rotate X, shift, rotate Z, move over to keyable, and there we are. So now they're keyable. Now I can clear, create a clean expression. If I was to add this expression on the wrist control and say, hey, rotate in the X, I'm going to get an error in the in Maya. It's going to say, dude, it's locked off, man. Anyway, okay. So we select this guy, and under window, animation editors, expression editor, I'm going to create a new expression. I'm going to call it left wrist, <coughs> excuse me, twist, capital T W I S T. And what I've done to do this is what you want. What we want to do is select the control. Uh oh, I just moved it. And um, and basically, you know, let's just check the time, make sure. Okay, I should be good. Um, okay, so I have the left wrist twist. Okay, and what I'm going to do is down here under the expressions, um, I need to select the forearm, this joint, and I'm going to copy. Basically, you know, well, let me just make a long story short. Is I made I wrote up my script in Notepad. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to have the left forearm joint FK, which is what I have selected, and what we want is we want that in the rotate. We want to rotate around the X direction, so in the rotate X. Um, you know, if you need some further assistance, I, you know, I'll type up a little bit in my blog. But to make this video a little bit shorter, you just have to look up on page 106 if you don't understand scripting very much. But basically, we want the rotation in the forearm joint to be half of what the rotation here is in this control. So. And you know the expression editor Maya seems a little bit backwards to me. I'd rather I'd have rather have this time times a half equal the rotation of the forearm joint. Anyway, whatever. Uh, this is basically saying left forearm joint rotation x is going to be equal to 0.5 times the control rotate. So half of the control. And then as well, the name of this is left elbow joint F K. And we have left elbow joint FK, rotate X direction, make sure I spelt all this right, uh, is half of what this control is. So write this up in your expression editor, and I'm just going to copy this and go back into Maya. And you want to select a control, not the offset or anything, the control. And I'll write a new thing here. Wrist to wrist is what I'm calling this. And under the expression, I'm just going to paste my new expression. Okay, and then I'm going to hit create. And you can see it turned these upper bones uh, purple because now the wrist has a constraint over here. Leave this open a little bit. And uh, okay, so now if I select my wrist control and I go to rotate it, you kind of got to. Well, here, let's do this. Um, let's select this. And I'm going to select my hierarchy. I'm going to go into comment. Hopefully I'm not running out of time. Uh, joint orient show axis. Sweet. 
Okay, hide that. All right, so all of our axes are being shown. I gotta double check the time I ran over last time. Okay, all the axes being shown. Okay, so I got my control selected. I'm gonna rotate down, and you can notice that the forearm is going 50%, and then I got another 50% is in the elbow. So uh, just take note: this is working exactly the way I want. As the wrist twists, this is only going half of the wrist, and this is going half of that. So now we can, you know, we can uh, make some different expressions and, and everything in here to evaluate this a little bit different. But it's doing exactly what I want right now. So uh, that is basically, I to make sure I have this all zeroed out before I go on. Okay, that is basically um, it in a nutshell. And um, uh, I'm trying to find the comment. Should have left this open. Hide axis. Close, close. All right. So this is the final video and the um, setting up the arm with the forward commatics. Uh, in the next series of videos, we are going to set up the IK um, for the arm, and then we will move on. Again, this last video is really important because uh, when we're moving on to doing stretchy uh, IK, we're going to break all these joints up into more than two. We're going to probably break them up into you know four uh, or something like that. And basically, we're going to create a script and everything for that. So anyway, uh, this is all set up. Everything should still move around properly. And uh, we are ready to install uh, some IK. So uh, thank you very much, and uh, see you next time.